Hello everyone, welcome back. Paisley here, and you're in Paisley in Life Garden. As you can see in the clip previous to me coming on here, we have an abundance of pears. They were gifted to us and our family, so I decided today that we're going to do something special with them. So come along and enjoy the journey. Alright, so we are going to wash these pears up. And for this recipe, it calls for 15 pears, and I'm going to be doubling the batch, and since some of these are small, I'm probably going to have a little over 30, but I'm going to uh, wash them and put them in my slow cooker. Alright, so now we have... Our pears all washed up and put in our slow cooker here and like I said this recipe calls for 15 pears but I've doubled it and Carmen's over there playing um, so uh, you're gonna need two cups of water but in my case since I'm doubling it we're going to do four cups of water in here now you're going to ask why is she not peeling them? Well, with this recipe you don't have to. You're going to soften them up and I'll show you later what we can do with the pulp and the skin and all the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and get the water ready. So I'm going to be putting four cups of water in here. We're not saying bye to our friends yet, Carmen. Alright, so we have four cups of water in there. And we're going to go ahead and turn this on to 350. Put our lid on. And this should take roughly 30 minutes, but it could take a little longer, a little less, depends on how ripe your pears are. So I will come back and check on this about every 10 minutes and move them around until they get to the desired consistency that we're looking for. Meanwhile, let's turn you around here. We were also gifted a good amount of fresh, off the vine grapes. You'll have to stay tuned for another video for that. But those smell absolutely divine. As you can see, they're starting to brown and get softer. And we're going to go ahead and Keep letting these cook down until they get soft enough for our next step. I'm going to rotate them around so that they can try to get evenly softened here. And the next step will come back and continue on. Alright, so you can see that they are good and browned up and I think they're ready now to put in the strainer all right so as you can see I have the colander here with a good stainless steel pan and I'm going to bring the pears over and start putting them in there nice brown color hopefully they should be soft enough that I'll be able to mash it through and we'll continue getting all of them transferred and then we'll bring you right back okay so what I'm going to use is my tomato or tomato potato smasher and I'm just going to start smashing these down and try to get, push all that pulp through here 
This also keeps the skin from getting through and all that. This is probably the most physically challenging part of this. Probably could have cooked them a little bit longer. That's okay. We'll work through it and we'll get through it. So I'm going to keep doing this until we get all of the pears smashed up and get most of the pulp all the way into the pan. And as you can see, I'm smashing them down. And the pear pulp is going down in the pan. That's them over here already. And this should be pretty much just all skin and remnants when you're done. And I'm doing only a few at a time. So that um, I can handle it a little bit better for myself. I'm going to continue doing this. And then we'll see how many cups that we get. It is okay that some of the remnants get through as long as it's not the seeds. But sometimes you'll have some skin come through and that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. But we're going to continue mashing. And then we'll see the amount that we get from the pears that we put in. Alright, so in my pot here, we have 16 cups of pear pulp. Um, and by all means, if you're going to do this and you have a food grill or what do you call that, food mill or uh, something like that, work smarter not harder. I don't have one, so I had to do it by hand. But it's still doable. They did it back in the day when my grandparents and great-grandparents used the, uh, their hands instead of a food mill. But um, as I said earlier, I am doubling this recipe. So the recipe calls for 8 cups, but I've made 16. And uh, now we're going to take this and pour it into back into our cooker. And I've turned the cooker down. To 250. I'm going to make sure I get all that pulp out at least as much as I can. We don't want to waste any of it. So I've got this back in the cooker now. And we are going to leave it at 250. And we will move on to the next steps. Alright, so this recipe calls for six cups of sugar. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in my big container here. So a little bit too much. Perfect. So there's six and a half or six cups there. And the next step, we're going to take a cup and a half of this out. And pour it in our frying pan here. All right, 
move this sugar out of the way and we're going to turn our burner on low and at this point we're going to let this sugar slowly on a low on one of the lowest settings but slowly start melting and caramelizing to a medium brown color this is going to be the caramel part of your spiced pear pear butter so I'm going to keep working this and I will um, like I said slowly break this sugar down till it starts to melt and get to that medium color we're looking for all right so it is starting to caramelize now you're going to notice that let me see if I can get a piece here you might have some like chunks I don't know if you can see that or not and that's okay that's normal it will do that and when we put it in with the pear butter it will also do that so don't get discouraged and don't think you did something wrong what's going to happen is the longer that it cooks it will dissolve back into the pear butter and you won't have those chunks like that I'm going to continue doing this until we get all of the sugar cooked to that medium caramel color that we're looking for and then we'll add it to the rest of the pear butter. Alright, so I have moved it in and I got it to the brownness that I was looking for for my taste. Like I said, you want it to be about a medium color. And you can see that there's some chunks still in there and that's fine because as this cooks it will continue breaking down and give it that caramelized kind of flavor so next we're going to move on Ooh. And I'm going to set you up over here. All right, so now we're going to start adding our other spices. Get this stirred in here. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that you are stirring frequently. And um, I've got my water bath canner here set up. And we're going to put the jars in there to get them. They've already been washed and ready to go. They're going to um, sterilize. And that way they're ready for when we're ready to can. So now you're going to take your, you're going to need cinnamon. And I'm doubling this recipe. As I said earlier. But you're... You're going to need one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. I have three in here because I'm doubling it. So I'm going to put all that in there and discard this. And then I'm going to add ground ginger. And you're only going to need, I'm going to be putting three teaspoons in or not three teaspoons I'm sorry um, a whole teaspoon in seems like oh here they are because this calls for a half teaspoon so I'm gonna put a whole teaspoon of ginger in And then we're going to use ground cloves and it's going to call for one teaspoon but for me I'm going to be putting two in oh, hold on a second Let me 
didn't realize that had plastic on there. Okay. So we're going to put two cloves in here for ours. And then we're just going to stir this up. And get that blended in there. If you could smell this, oh, it smells delicious. So now it's just a waiting game. Let's see if I can set you up without dropping you here. Now it's just a waiting game. I have it turned up to 250. And we're gonna just let this start cooking down, uncovered. I may have to turn the temperature up some, we'll see. We're gonna let it cook down so it gets to the consistency that we're looking for for a pear butter. And that's it. I will bring you back once it starts cooking down and getting into a thicker consistency that we're looking for. All right, so we are ready. It is to the consistency that we like for our family. Um, and I can show you another way that you can judge this as well. You can take the back of a spoon, put it in there like that, and separate it with your finger. If it doesn't come back together, then it's ready. And it's good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our jars going. <coughs> and I said I've already um, sterilized them. I'm going to bring two over. And for this, you want hot jars, hot substance, and hot lids. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the first one here. And you're going to take this up to a half inch headspace. Now this is also going to get a little bit thicker as it cools down. after processing. Get my little towel here so I'm not burning myself. Alright, let's make sure. Yep. Now I'm going to take my clean towel, rag, cheesecloth, whatever you want to use. And I'm dipping it in white vinegar to ripe, ugh, ripe, listen to me, wipe my rims so that we can get a good seal. So this does have sugar in it and you don't want any food contaminants affecting your lids. Debubble here. And then I'm going to grab my lid. Put it on now according to ball you do not have to heat up your your rims or your lids anymore but I do because I find for myself it gives me an easier seal I see a little bit of remnants on the side here that we can get now 
And then we're going to go ahead and put this in the water bath canner. We'll do one more. Like I said, you want a half inch head space. You probably hear Carmen in there. She's really excited and playing and but a uh, half inch head space. The bubble and then we're gonna go ahead and wipe the rim put the lid on and put it in the bath water bath as well all right so with that my recipe that was eight cups of pear butter and I doubled to 16 has gotten me 12 12 ounce jelly jars full plus an extra little half pint here that will go in the refrigerator for use right away so I have put the lid on the canner and turned the heat up and once that comes to a rolling boil we will set the timer for 10 minutes um, well, 15 minutes is what we'll go with. Um, it, check on that with your elevation. We're going to go with 15 here just to make sure that we're following exactly what we need to do. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up. And in the next clip is when you'll see that the jars are ready. Alright, so I have removed the lid and we're letting that settle for five minutes before we pull the jars out. That way you don't have a huge temperature drop and risk cracking your jars. And there you have it. Look at those beautiful jars. All preserved and ready to be put up. Pear butter tastes wonderful and that's it it's all uh, ready to go to be put on the shelf it is hot in here Whew. been working all day on this and it is going to be so worth it so thank you for oh, heard a pop thank you for joining me today hopefully you learn how to make pear butter for yourself and getting ready for those fall flavors Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and as always, share, share, share. God bless.